Hi everyone, my name is Terry Miller with Terry's Tidbits, and in today's video we are continuing our comparison between Process Builder and Lightning Flow. If this is the first time you've seen one of these videos, it's an eight-part series, we're on part six today, and we just simply compare what you already know about Process Builder, and we show you how to do that very same thing in Lightning Flow. In this video, we are going to focus on the email alert element. So let's get started. We are on part six of the eight part series. This part is looking specifically at the email alert. I have up on the screen to, for you to see is the cheat sheet that you can download from terrystidbits.com and it simply shows you the action that takes place in Process Builder and shows us how we complete that same thing on the Flow side. So Process Builder on one side and Flow on the other. So go out there to terrystidbits.com if you're not already there and download uh, that cheat sheet and you can read the blog posting about this post there as well. So let's go ahead and do a quick little refresher. If this is the first time you may not have seen this org, so we've got this field that we've been kind of picking on throughout this series and it's called our CSTAT rating for the account. And in this video what we wanted to do is if this CSTAT rating changes to unsatisfied, we want to notify the owner's man manager that that occurred. And we're going to do that using an email alert. So let's jump over to Process Builder. And right here's our decision element that we have for that CSTAT rating equals unsatisfied. And we have our notify the owner email alert set up here. So one thing about Process Builder is that it uses the old, old, old email alerts that have been a part of Salesforce for at least as long as I can remember. It's this one back here with the under email alerts. And I've got just one email alert set up. That is the one that is going to, to notify our owner when that rating is changed to unsatisfied. So that's the old email alert. And again, that is what we are calling here inside of Process Builder. So hopefully you've done this before in Process Builder, you get it. And um, it's just kind of old school there. But we wanna to focus today on how do we do this in Flow. So if you already have a uh, Flow built, for on, on the account record, you would want to use that, that same flow. I'm going to create a new one just so that we can kind of walk through it from, from uh, start to finish. And so I'm going to go into flow and just select a new flow. And we have been doing record trigger flows. Record trigger flows are uh, operate somewhat similar to the way your process builder does in that during that save process that's when what would kick off this record trigger flow so we're going to continue with that by simply selecting on it and i recommend that you stick with that auto layout just because it's significantly simpler for a new beginner to to be able to see things get built on the screen you don't have to connect lines you don't come into a blank canvas that you wonder what the heck do i have to do next it's just a lot easier to uh, starting point for, for those of you trying to learn to use Flow. So our start element, we have talked about this back in video one, but just to, so I'm gonna run through it quickly. This is going to be um, when a record is created or updated, we'll use it that way. And then we're going to make this an after record trigger flow. Now the reason that it's an after record trigger flow, if you remember in kind of the 90-95% the rule that I, I've talked about before in the order of execution that says which one of these do we want to do, a before or an after? And the in this case, because we're sending an email, 
that email creates a, a task record for us. And so because of that, we want to do that in the after. So it's not even possible actually in the before. So Salesforce has kind of made it easy to know which one you need. So uh, after trigger is the one that we want. Yeah, so that part of, the, of our start element looks good. We need to choose our object and this is the account object. And we are going to say no conditions on this. And the reason for that is we want to build our decisions right within the flow. That allows us to then have multiple decisions similar to the way that it looks in Process Builder where you have your, your decision and then actions. And then if it's false, it goes down to the next decision, actions, and so forth. We're, we're replicating that same type of look and feel uh, by selecting no uh, no conditions required on that start element. All right, so we do need to create that decision. So I'm going to click on the little plus uh, sign there and let's grab a decision element. So I'm going to just get some of this set up. I'm going to I'm going to keep it pretty simple here. And our, our outcome is going to be unsatisfied. Set is fied. I am like the world's worst speller, so let me fix that. And then our resource here, remember dollar record, that's our friend. And we're going to click into that and look for that C stat field. There's that custom field equals in this case unsatisfied so that's our unsatisfied condition and then i i personally don't like the term default outcome so i'm just going to call this one satisfied goodness sakes i cannot spell at all all right done so we have now a unsatisfied and a satisfied path which you will see right here and so now, now we're going to go ahead and get into the actual email alert, what we're here to talk about today. If you um, need some help on the decision, go back to video two. Video two talks about that decision element as well. So unsatisfied, we want to click on the add element. And we're going to leverage this action. So in the past videos, we've, we've, we've looked at the start element. We've looked at decisions. And we've looked at inserting and updating records, getting records. In this video, we are going to start, in fact, this one and the, the next th uh, two videos, we're all going to be looking at the interaction action calls. So when we click on that, it brings up a kind of an empty screen and you kind of wonder, what do I do with this thing? It's a little bit different. You do have the ability to filter the types of things that you want to do. I tend to just simply start typing what I'm looking for. I find it just a little bit easier. And so in this case, I know I want to do an email. So I'm just typing email in there. And look at what shows up here. So I've got my account after manager alert. That's the same alert that we were using over here in Process Builder. And it just shows up in here for me. And I can simply select that. I've also got this second option here called send email. The email simple is what that is, is its technical name. We're going to look, look at that one in just a little bit at the end of the video, but let's keep this as close to what we did in Process Builder. So we're just going to choose that old email alert. And just like Process Builder, you have to give it a name. So we're going to say email manager. And what's, what is different in Flow is that the, all of the elements that we put on the page in Flow, they're used across all of the various um, types of flows that we have. So if you're doing a scheduled flow or if you're doing a screen flow, it's the same elements. And those elements aren't, uh, aren't aware of the record that you're on because they may, they may serve a different purpose in those other types of flows. I get it that in, in a record trigger flow, why it, it ought to know. It's the, it's the record that triggered the flow. But because these elements are used across such a wide range of different types of flows, we do have to define it. 
And so we're going to go into that record ID, and, and we're simply going to go down to our dollar record. Remember, our dollar record's our friend. And we're going to choose the account ID. It might be faster just to type it in. Account ID is our record ID. And then we just simply say done. And we have our email alert set up and ready to go. So that is all there is to an email alert inside of, of uh, Record Trigger Flows. Very simple, easy, easy, just like it is over on the Process Builder side. So let me let me take and um, go backwards here a little bit. If you don't want to use the email alert, Maybe that's something that you think, think, man, that's old. It uses the old email templates, the classic email templates, and I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do, do something that I know is going to be around. I, just, I hope it's going to be around for a little while. <laughs> you never know with, with, uh, with Salesforce how soon something might change. But I'm going to create another email alert here. So let's go into Actions and type in email. And again, this is just for demonstration purposes. So... Um, I, I, you wouldn't put both of these two different types in this flow at the same time. But um, let's, I, I chose the send email one, and you'll notice that it comes up. I have to give it a name just like I did the other one. Uh, send email, we'll call it just simple. And it looks a lot like a regular email. When you click on sending a new email, you have a body that you can enter your the body, the, the main part of your email. And I would recommend here, if you are going to use this, uh, that you create a resource that's called a text template. And that text template gives you a, uh, a nice, clean, rich text type uh, form that you can basically create your email uh, right directly inside of the flow. So that's, that is a new concept there. Let me show you what I did there again. It is simply selecting a new resource. And our resource type is a text template. And you type in what you want it to be down here at the bottom. You can do it as rich text. You can also do it as plain text. Simply up to what, what works best for your scenario. Okay, so that would be the body. The subject, you could... You could create a resource specific to the subject. If you did, it's probably going to be a constant or a variable type text. There is also no reason you can't just say, type it directly inside the, the field as well. Okay, so you could do, do that just as easy. Now this gets kind of interesting here. We've got two different email address options for us and we, we would simply click into the one that we want to use. We've got a collection and a collection, if you recall, <laughs> back on some of the previous videos I was using a, a scenario where a variable basically was a drawer and a dresser that you put something in and when you needed to go get it, you just open the drawer and there it is. And then the entire record is like the dresser and then if you had multiple dressers in your room, that would be a collection of records. And that's what this really is. It's, it would be a collection of email addresses. So if you're sending it to multiple people, you can have a collection, probably going to be a text-based collection, that, def that holds an email address as individual items within that collection. That gets a little bit more tricky to, to get created, uh, and and it would it wouldn't be done probably in a, in, um, in in this particular use case that we've been playing with. But um, that's certainly a very powerful option. You also have the comma separated uh, email addresses, and this could be also a variable. It could be a single variable that simply holds all of the email addresses with commas in it. If you don't like that approach and it's something that you, you know who it's going to go to, you could simply put their email address directly into the form. And that will work just as well. Now, sender address and sender type. 
that one's kind of a little bit, um, a little confusing. The first time I saw that, I was like, what is that one about? Because I kind of thought, well, maybe I can just put somebody's address in here. And so I took, took a moment and I went over and I looked at the help on this one. And the help indicates that sender type, it can be the current user, your default workflow user, or an org-wide email address. If you're using an org-wide email address, then that's what you're going to put. You're going to identify it in that sender address. Okay, so that's, that's how those two particular fields work. So I like, I like the fact that I can define my email directly inside of my flow. I don't have to go and create an, an old classic temp, uh, email template. Uh, that it just is kind of it feels good to be able to do it right here and not use some of that old stuff. What I wish that it did and is I wish that we had a template that we could build outside of Flow and just point to that that new like a new Lightning uh, email template. It would be awesome if we could just point to that instead of defining it in here because then it would be reusable. So if I if I needed to send that particular email for a variety of different reasons, I wouldn't have to cre recreate it every time. Uh, so there are some advantages to that old email alert, and, and at least today, in that we can reuse it. This is a, a single use item. If you want to throw more, multiple emails in, you would have to create it again. Uh, so just be aware of that. That is one I think is a downside of that of this new approach. And I think that is it for our um, process here today. So a uh, reminder, head out to uh, Terry's Tidbits and you will see the blog post out there that talks you through this process as well. You can get to the YouTube video from there. You can also download the cheat sheet from there. I do I ask that you subscribe to my channel. If you would just take a moment, click on that like button down there, subscribe. And it just is a way of, of communicating back to me that, hey, you're finding this stuff helpful. And that gives me the ability to know what type of content is, is most effective in helping you on your Salesforce journey. So uh, thank you again for watching. Next week, we are going to be looking at uh, creating a chatter post. So that's next week. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day.